the needs of these older teen kids, and now you've got all the way down to an infant. There's such a span there. I would love to hear any of the challenges or the different things that have worked for you guys, trying to help bridge those gaps or just manage the tension that's created. Because I think one thing that's difficult culturally is that it's so common for kids to grow up in same age cohorts everywhere they go, church and schooling. And, and so oftentimes I think it's hard for kids to feel like it's normal or natural to have to hang out with their five-year-old when they're a teenager, for example, like these are, and so you guys spent some time in the Dominican Republic actually like doing ministry and or missions with your whole family. So yeah, I'll just take us in a little bit to what have you learned about how to navigate that tension? Yeah. Well, there is tension. Let's not pretend that it's yes. all just <laughs> unicorns and rainbows, you know? Yes. I was telling you before we got, got on, you know, we're experiencing a bit of tension right now. So I mentioned music already and the older kids are involved in music and trying to bring in the younger kids. But sometimes you're dealing with personalities and attitudes and it's like, oh, you're little, you're good at the piano. So can you help your little sister, you know, with the piano? And people are not always gung-ho you know to do that sort of thing so certainly there's a tension and a challenge you know practically um when we were in dominican and we stole this idea from some big family at some point about buddying people up together and if you've got you put an older kid with a younger kid super practically like in the airport we all wore red sweaters so we wouldn't lose anyone like <laughs> have you seen a kid in a red sweater anywhere he's with us people were like hey are you a sports team or what no we're just we're just a family but you know trying to Look at what your kids, what our kids' strengths are and try and connect them with a younger one who maybe has those strengths. But even the younger ones, you don't know what their strengths and skills are yet. So just trying to build that relationship between the older ones and the younger ones. We just got back from a art gallery tour at, in town here with a homeschool group. Mm -hmm. And our 15-year-old was holding the baby the whole time while mom was helping the kids do their art crafts at the museum. So... Literally, you've got to, my wife and I don't have enough hands to do all the stuff. And someone asked me, what would you do if your wife passed away? I'm like, well, I need someone to help run the organization here. Like it yes. takes all of us to work together. Yeah. And, and talking about the missions thing and the adventure stuff, you know, it's not those big things. I don't think that necessarily make sure they make an impact, but you know, we got to collect the eggs. So my six-year-old son, his responsibility is to go and collect the eggs. And that is, I think that's building the responsibility in him more than, you know, going to help paint yes. a house in Dominican or something like that, because it's a consistent daily thing that I think we need to build in our kids in the small, everyday, mundane, folding laundry part of life, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's huge. Well, and I'm curious, like, as you guys have decided to do more of the homesteading approach, it does seem like the larger the family, um, the more intentional you're trying to train your children, there's such an advantage to having that physical labor side of the family, even though it creates all this additional elements to manage, it, it becomes like a sink or swim. It's like, if I don't train my kids or find a way somehow to motivate us all to work, we're all going down together. I'm curious, yeah, what, what kinds of living situations have you guys attempted before this? And then yeah, what what was it like making that? Why did you guys make the decision to start to to to, to actually do more of the homesteading with with uh, your whole family? Yeah, so we uh, we lived out in the country. We had an acre uh, before we moved. We've got eight acres now, so it's not like this huge farm or anything. But we just got into it little by little. We moved out of town about ten years ago, bought an acre, and started. We got a few chickens and just kind of started small. We didn't know what we were doing. And then we got some goats, we got some beehives and just, we wanted to become a little more independent. You know, we're not like off the grid or anything. It would be great to be, but just getting our own for health reasons as well. My wife is kind of the health department or the food department. And, and so she does a lot of research and stuff and just growing your own things and having your own things can, is just a healthier way to be. So give her all the props for that. And we just wanted to expand a little bit more from our acre. So we literally moved 30 hours across the country uh, to the to the plains uh, where we could get more affordable land. It was a, a financial decision. It freed me up to do a little more of these kind of outside projects of writing and speaking and doing some of this kind of stuff because we could 
be out of debt. We could have some savings and, and make some of these choices. So getting the kids involved is key, but we just wanted to uh, be in a spot where we could teach our kids things. There was like practical, like I just said, collecting the eggs, going to, we've got calves. So the boys got to bring milk to the calves because we don't have a mother for them. So they're mixing milk and bringing it out in buckets. And I just think the kind of homesteady life, we have so many opportunities to get your kids yes. to do to do the work, like it's sink or swim, like you just said, right? So, so it was a step for us. Hey, I realize it's not for everyone, but it's working good. 